If there's anything I have learned in my time of being a Celtic fan, being the short 17 years I've been on earth, is we never like to do things easy. Never. We've never done anything easy. And tonight, once again, we prove that. As happy as I am, a lot of criticism in tonight's game. A lot to talk about. Absolutely shambolic at points. But before we quickly get into the match review, and sorry for the squinty specs, blame fat Kieran. He broke them ages ago and I've still got to actually get them fixed. Anyway, um, before I get into the review, a couple of things to mention. First thing, Celtic, uh, the Celtic, the Thunder Celtic podcast, if you like, was out yesterday. If you've not seen it, go and check it out uh, if you enjoy podcasts and such. And secondly, also a shout out to the Dugout. Got a YouTube channel on a website. I'll leave his links in the description who featured my match vlog on his website recently. And in return, I decided I would uh, give him a kind of a shout out on the, on the channel for being uh, nice that way. So just returning the favour there. But anyway, the match tonight finishing a Stana 4 Celtic 3. Fucking hell, did not expect the second half that we were given. We may as well start from the first half because that's what came first, so it's quite logical to go from the first to the second half. First half, to be honest, I saw the shakiness in Celtic. I saw the fact that Baton and Ayer were not looking sharp, and there was a couple of other players who weren't looking sharp, and there was a couple of players who were looking good. Sinclair had a relatively good first half as well. Uh, a few players did come through in the first half to be quite good. Uh, we went down 1 0, and then we f fired back. Basically instantly on five or so minutes later and we got the equaliser. And from the first half performance I was thinking to myself, aye, might have not been the best but we're doing what we have to do. And for a European away game, what we were playing like in the first half, especially all the way here in Kazakhstan against a tougher opposition than Linfield and Rosenberg, I was decently happy with what we were going into half time with. I wasn't too bothered, we were doing what we were doing. But the second half, we all seen it, we, we, we may as well not ignore it. Um, one of the most shambolic halves of football I have seen in a long time for Celtic. A long, long time. It was taking us back to Tony Mowbray, if you like, for a, for a some 10 minutes of the game. The defending was absolutely shocking. And I poised the question right now in the comments you can answer. And I said it in my podcast yesterday, I don't want to see him go. Do people still want to see Eric Sviatchenko go? I don't care if we're bringing in this fucking, what's his name, South African boy. We're bringing him in, fair enough. But do people really still want to see Eric Sviatchenko go after tonight's performance in the back line? Never in a million years is my response. I, we can't afford to lose Sviatchenko after seeing that defensive performance tonight from Celtic. Absolutely abysmal. Near Baton returning back to his near Baton like form. Nice to have you back. Was not expecting him to be consistently great. It was only a matter of time, I thought, before we did see the real proper near Baton come back out. The near Baton of last season, which everyone slated week in, week out. I thought it was only a matter of time before we got that near Baton back. And uh, he proved it tonight. And uh, I feel like it's a shame because he's been doing well at holding down the spot for the past few weeks since we, you know, funneled into this kind of injury crisis at the centre-back position. He's done well and I don't want to go out and deliberately say, look, he's shite, get rid of him. I don't want to go out and directly and attack a player. But once again, he's proven like, during this game tonight that he has a slight bit of a liability. Just, just a slight wee bit. His performance was by no means abysmal at the back. And there was other players who had an abysmal game as well, not just him. He's not the only victim of having an appalling game and nearly taking us to a point where we could have panicked. I felt at no point in the game panicky. I was only going to panic if it got to 6 all or 6-5. That was the only point where I feel like we had a proper reason to panic. But near Baton having an absolute stinker and we cannot go in to the Champions League group stage with Neil Baton playing at centre back. No matter how much it looks as always developed in that position from where he was last season at centre mid, he once again proved tonight that he is a liability, I would say. And, and mostly going to be a rotational backup player for Celtic where I expected him to be at the start of the season. Tonight, he had a shambolic performance, and it's just something that I can't, as a Celtic fan, and many Celtic fans will agree, can trust going into the Champions League group stage. I just find it incredibly difficult to trust a player who's not experienced as a centre-back, who's not got the training to be a centre-back, and only started playing the role to carry us through what could potentially be a very tough Champions League group stage. Alongside him, Ayer didn't have the best of games. Ayer, though, you've got to, like, I'm taking the understanding, he's 19. He was thrown in at the deep end with a last minute Jozo Simonovic like, pull out from the game. So I, there's a slight bit of forgiveness in there for, for me for Ayer. Did not have a great game though. Scott Brown. 
for me, the catalyst of the downfall, just for me, like, his passing, and the team's passing overall between the 45th and the 80th minute was absolutely outrageous. It was shocking. I don't know, we couldn't have string two passes together. It was bloody abysmal. And we just kept giving them opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. Coming back to the defensive stuff, we weren't closing them down. We were giving them all the space in the world. We were making life difficult for Craig Gordon, who, you know, conceded four goals tonight, all down to the lack of closing down and the, and the poor defending. I feel sorry for Craig Gordon because, once again, he made a couple of important saves that might have saved this Looking back, he made a couple of important saves tonight, which really could have been costly if he wasn't in the goals. Yet he still gets stick from some fans, and once again tonight he had to do with this back lane, let them down, giving space to Astana, and they were just creating chances out of chances they should never have been given. And the poor passing is another reason for that. Scott Brown, God knows what he was doing tonight. I, I just, it's one of those performances again that makes you go, is Scott Brown really going to be consistent this season? Last season I was great in Europe. This year in Europe. Not exactly the best of performances for me so far in the qualifying campaign. A lot of time to turn it around when we get into the group stage. But Scott Brown for me tonight had an incredibly weak performance. And I also feel like we're just missing Moussa Dembele. I always go on about Dembele being a big game player. And I think we needed him tonight. Griffiths, once he was getting into the game, I think he got just frustrated with his performance. Granted, he wasn't given a lot of, you know, a lot of service to create a, a, a lot of chances. But when he was given the chances, he wasn't doing very well with them. He scored a good goal in the last fucking kick of the ball, basically. But up until that point, he wasn't having the greatest of games. And I feel like that's the type of game Moussa Dembele is a better player, personally for me, than Lee Griffiths. And we needed Moussa Dembele in that situation. But on the striker front of things, I don't feel like I complain too much. Because the service for Lee Griffiths wasn't exactly superb tonight. He wasn't given a lot of chances. But yet again, I just don't feel like he helped himself create a lot of chances either. Which could have been something a lot better. Scott Sinclair had a crack in first half. Olivier and Cham is turning out to be one of the best signings we could have potentially made this summer. Absolutely incredible performance. Not incredible, right? We got beat 4-3, but you know what I mean? The shining light. It's hard to find a shining light in these sort of games where we're beaten 4-3, we're manhandled uh, for a period of the game, yet there's someone who still comes out of being uh, as being a good player. And then Cham was that. He is he's really proven his worth. And uh, a great performance. He's my man of the match. I should start doing that. Shouldn't I be gimmicky? Thing. Ryan's man of the match. Ryan's man of the match was Olivier and Cham. Brilliant performance from him tonight, I thought. Tierney, decent performance for him. But that period between the 45th minute, the set start of the second half, to the 80th minute of the game, really does have me question how we got into this Champions League group stage. This this dom domestic unbeaten season has nothing on what we, are, what we are going to have to do now in the Champions League. Everyone goes, oh, we're domestic unbeaten and all the rest of it. But the, the Champions League group stage is a completely different kettle of fish. A completely different box of frogs, whatever term you want to use, and that's going to have no relevancy heading into this. I feel like we need to put our heads back in reality now. We might have won five 0 last week, but that performance here tonight proves that there's still, you know, there's there's still doubts in there, and there's still wee bits we need to fix. We might need to improve on. And it's just these wee things that we need to stop doing. And I know it's always difficult for Celtic away on the road, but tonight we made life too difficult for ourselves, incredibly difficult for ourselves, when it really should not have been done, an abysmal second half, it was it was embarrassing to watch, we just collapsed, and we didn't get ourselves back into the game, and yeah, we scored two in the last ten minutes, but between that point where we were getting manhandled, we just kept letting, we just let them get into the game far too much, it should never have happened, I don't know how the defence didn't cope with it, but when it, it shows how vital it is to have players like Bayata, Svetchenko, uh, and Semenovic fit. They three right now, we need Pronto back in the team. And this Coetzee guy, is he going to be reliable coming into the team in the first season and being a Champions League group stage player? We don't know. We, is that a gamble? That's why we need to, in my opinion, keep Svetchenko. One of the main takeaways from this game for me is the fact we should not get rid of Eric Svetchenko. And I hope to Christ we don't after tonight's performance because defensively it was a riot. That's that's the main takeaway. What else can you take away from this game tonight? We're through. I'm happy about it. I was never panicking. When you think about it, I would have happily walked out of Astana, uh, out of Kazakhstan with a 1-0 loss. I would have been chuffed with that. I would have think to myself, that's great. That that was what I was expecting us to do. Something like, you know, try and get a draw and not get embarrassed. We weren't exactly embarrassed, but it was the manner of how we conceded the goals tonight. It was ridiculous and never should have happened. That is how I would sum up everything. Just shouldn't have happened. Should We made life far too difficult. Because 1-0, 4-3, same difference in goals, 
You know, same goal difference, but it was just ridiculous how we gifted those goals away. Anyway, Champions League group stage draw is on Thursday. I will make a video of my reaction to the group, and we'll we'll see how I think we get we'll get on. It's it's nervy now, isn't it? Very nervy. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure to hit like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts of the game as always. If you don't agree with me, fair. Fire away your abuse. Doesn't bother me. But aye, if you have enjoyed, like and subscribe and all that, I'd really appreciate it, guys. And uh, until next time, uh, I'll see you all later.